Hi everyone, it's Mandy here and welcome to Success Love Speed, the summit and Yachting International Radio again, who's also hosting the show this week. And I'm delighted to introduce you to one of my all time faves, one of my amazing mentors and biggest life inspirations and dear friend, the amazing Tammy J. McKenzie. Tammy, do you want to introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? The theme of this is success loves speed. And as you know, on this summit, we're talking about the secrets that no one talks about. So who are you? Hey, everybody. Um, well, I'm Tammy. Um, I'm a chiropractor and holistic nutritionist and exercise and sports scientist by qualifications. Um, and basically what I do is, is I help people come back home to the innate wisdom of their, of their bodies to unlock the potential that resides within them so that they can live a lit up life that truly inspires them and that they just, you know, love um, from the inside out. So a life that's completely aligned with your values and completely aligned with your, with your vision. And that just really like a nourished um, soul driven life as well so that's what I find fun amazing and on that note you are very body aware and I actually saw you speaking on stage in Australia at a huge festival about three years ago and I remember thinking to myself I have to get to know this woman because you did one of the most fascinating talks on the nervous system I've ever heard. And it was an entrepreneurial festival at the Freedom Fest. You were talking about the nervous system. How does that apply to success? Like, are the, are the two, could you even relate the nervous system and success? Well, they're intricately interlinked because we live our lives through our nervous system. So if you think about what our nervous system does, essentially our we live, we live our life through it. So our brain is constantly talking to our body all the time. Um, it's receiving information and feedback um, from the outside world. We take that in via our senses. That goes up via our nervous system to our brain. Our brain makes sense of it, and then it responds automatically. And what is happening is that for most people, we are living um, a life that is based on past conditioning and past programming and past patterns that have been wired into our nervous system from different traumas, toxins, um, you know, chemicals, thought processes all those kind of things what we refer to as the three t's thoughts traumas toxins and so if we're not able to come into this place where we can be in connection and expansion within our nervous system if we're not able to come into this place where we can actually feel safe to allow our body to expand and to increase our energetic capacity to receive across the board on all levels then we won't allow ourselves to live a life that's totally aligned with our vision and our values and to increase you know um, you know, our, our businesses and, and what they do and the ripple effect that we are desiring to create in the world from living lit up and truthful to us. So the nervous system and what's going on within our bodies is literally hand in hand interweaved and interconnected with being an entrepreneur. And the faster that we can come back into connection and into safety within our bodies and feel that safety within our nervous system, then the faster that we can dissolve any stories or charges or negative beliefs or programming or imprinting that might be blocking us or stopping us from taking that next step as an entrepreneur. So what I'm hearing is that by regulating the nervous system, so really just calming the farm in all aspects, you'll be more grounded and more centered and therefore more productive. Would that be right? Yeah, in a nutshell. It's so funny you say that. That's my seven-year-old's favorite saying. He's like, if I ever lose the plot, which I do on occasion, he's like, just calm the farm, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> or tuck a turtle he tells me to tuck a turtle <laughs> tuck a turtle I'm going to use that one <laughs> so the thing is is I've heard so many people say that in modern society um, when we're on the computer all the time when we used to rush around the world but when we're still even though we're not traveling the miles we you know used to all travel we're still in the rush even working from home you know, you, people are still in a rush. They've got huge to-do lists and they're, they're on their computers in funny positions. People say, I've heard a great, another great saying recently is that it's like our bodies think we're being chased by a bear that's not there, you know, with the old fight or flight thing. So is that true? 
Yes, it is um, to an extent because when we're sitting at computers or you know sitting in general, what generally happens is that our head goes forward. And so when our body is constantly in that posture, that posture would have been the posture that we were in when we were running away from tigers. So yes, we are running away from bears that aren't there. Now what's also happening is that when we're in that response, our body, our nervous system is releasing hormones and different chemicals and neurotransmitters into our body. But because we're then not actually moving or running from a tiger, they're not actually being released from our system. And so then the muscles are doing all the contraction and all of the like, you know, locking in, but they're not actually being used. And so the, the, the energy and those hormones are not being actually fully expressed and felt and released from our body. So they're being stored and accumulated within our system, which is where over time, I guess those negative breakdown effects start to happen. We are absolutely designed to be able to access that part of our nervous system. If we weren't able to access that part of our nervous system, that would totally be a problem as well. Like we would we'd just, you know, kind of be like floppy fish potentially. However, when we are over accessing it or when we have perceived stress or perceived pressure, which often comes from, um, you know, I would say being committed to an outcome versus being committed to yourself, devoted to yourself, because when we're committed to outcomes or like attached to outcomes that must happen and they must happen in a certain way, then what we're essentially creating is pressure to create or pressure to do, which is a contracted energy. It's a, it's a limited things that we must to do in order to be a successful entrepreneur versus like if we're actually in expansion which is what our body and our nervous system needs and we're devoted to ourselves, and we're devoted to being the version of who we desire to be and we're simply allowing us to show up living that life aligned to our vision and values then we are able to live that lit up and expansive light life and then we have limitless things that we can create. There's never anything that we must do, but there's limitless possibilities that we can create from that place. So they're two very different energies, I believe, that you know we're creating from as entrepreneurs. One is from this expansive, lit up, fully aligned um, energy and connected to our vision and values. And then the other is from this like, I must do be an entrepreneur and in order to be an entrepreneur, it must look like this and it must happen in this way and it must be X, Y, and Z. So I've got two questions from that. That was so fascinating. The first one is, where do we start? Like, is there something, do you have to go and see a therapist or is there something you can do daily or when you feel stressed? How do you regulate the nervous system to be more productive and get more success? Well, obviously, if we're allowing ourselves to receive support and rewind patterns and programmings, then that can absolutely be, you know, a, an amazing thing to be checked and, you know, corrected by a chiropractor or whoever, you know, you want to choose to increase your emotional resiliency and your capacity, energetic capacity to, to receive. And at the same time, nothing's going to shift if you don't have the capacity to actually be connected to what's going on within you. So there's this cool saying within New Zealand where it's like, if there's a fire, you stop, drop and roll. I like to say that like if we can actually be in the sensation of the experience and we can just stop and connect and just simply be present and connected with what's going on within us and allow our bodies to feel safe no matter what the experience is that we're experiencing, then that is the thing that will literally allow whatever charge is being created within our body to be dissolved and then we'll come into the neutrality of that and then from that place there is again limitless possibilities that we can create. Stop, drop and connect. I'm going to set an alarm on my phone that says that every hour. That would be so useful. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd had that saying years ago. Um, the next question is, is how do we tap into that limitless potential? So you were saying that, you know, rather than be attached to the outcomes and what we actually want to do, if we knew ourselves and devoted ourselves to ourselves more, and live from that place, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, then, then we'll feel more successful. How, do you, how does one start with that? Well, I guess success is whatever we define success to be, but if, we, if we're defining it as living in a life that's in alignment with our, with our values and our, and our vision, we're on, I guess, mission or on purpose or in alignment with our calling, then um, starting from that place gets to be this... Um, 
this, I guess, this willingness to be in the experience, to just be present with what is. And when we commit to um, expanding our vision, then we're going to have this opportunity to have aspects of ourselves or maybe um, aspects of who we've been that served us up into a certain point they're going to come to the surface, they're going to be illuminated so that we can choose to respond differently to them. And it's the how we respond to whatever is being brought to the surface, whatever is being brought to the light, that is going to determine our capacity to, to receive next. It's going to determine you know, what we have the capacity to receive from that point. So being able to connect with those aspects of ourselves, being able to witness the stories or experience the stories, you know, experience the judgment or the self-doubt without going into judgment or self, you know, judgment of ourselves for having judgment is, you know, what will actually open up those portals and that limitless potentiality. Because when we're in that expansion and just that connection within our bodies, then we have um, any, anything is possible. Like we could go in any way, any direction, if we can cultivate that self-trust within ourselves. Sounds so easy, but I know many people would find it hard to, first of all, slow down to make that connection because people say that your body speaks. How do you even get to speak to your body? How do you get answers? Where, where would you start to connect? Is there Just a, a practice? just a willingness to, to ask a question. Um, for me, it literally, you know, was me just simply just asking my body, like, hey body, how are you feeling? Like, hey body, like, what do you want me to know? Like, what's present within me? What's alive within me? Like, or if I was feeling something, would just be a willingness to connect to that and be like, what is this about? Like, what is this trying to, you know, what is the gift that's within that? And so from that layer, you get to access whatever the emotional gift might be within it. Um, whatever the, the learning might be. And at the same time, you get to also, you know, invest in yourself and receive support by allowing the, the correction of what underlying, underlying patterns might or dysfunction might be stored within the spine and nervous system. And so, you know, when, you know, I'm checking people as a client, like it's, it's not, as a chiropractor, it's very common for me to touch somebody somewhere on their body and they will release emotion you know, with that chiropractic adjustment or with that correction because of how it was created. And so when we reconnect what has been disconnected, when we come back into connection where we've been out of connection, when we come into expansion where we've been, you know, in stress or contraction, then we are able to neutralize and dissolve those charges that are, that are present and alive within us. And that's when we come back into that, I guess, that zero point energy of, of creation. So it's just being, um, being willing to, to practice being in connection, being willing to align to, you know, your vision and, and what's true for you. And then just simply being willing to practice being that version of self and acknowledging and witnessing and experiencing whatever comes up in the process of living in alignment with that. So people, this is quite a trendy topic these days is, you know, show up as the future version of yourself um, and aligning with the vision. What does that mean? Does that actually mean you wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to pretend to be the billionaire goddess um, that I aspire to be that's in my visions and that's it. You just walk around in that zone as if you are the billionaire goddess. Where would you start with that? I think it's it's generally going to be slightly different for different people and how different people experience life. So for some people, it's going to come from a um, a feeling of how that feels, and it's the allowance of them experiencing or feeling into that feeling that will create that connection. And then from that feeling, they will be able to then show up and do um, the, the the things that they the habits that are aligned with that version of themselves. For other people, it all comes back to be, do and have, but people will access that through different, like, through different elements. Some will access it through feelings. Some will access it through like, well, what does it feel like when I have this? Some will access it from what does it feel like when I'm doing this? And then it's, it's taking that action. And when you're in the energy and the feeling and the knowing of yourself as in, not because it's, about the 
million dollar business or whatever the case may be, but that's simply who you know yourself as. You know yourself as somebody who shows up and, you know, shares value. You know yourself as somebody who nourishes and honors and connects with their body in a certain way. You know yourself as someone who, who lives in the authentic truth or speaks, you know, the trueness and fullness of their expression or who leans into the edges or, you know, has the conversations that, are, that, are, that might feel difficult or, you know, allows herself to just be present with whatever it is then that is essentially the, the being in alignment with that. But unless you know what you're aligning to, and of course, assuming that that's actually your truth versus actually taking somebody else's truth and, you know, wearing that as a jacket that's not actually the right size or wearing it as a shoe that's the wrong fit, then we can, if we're, we're not living what's true and authentic to us, then we're essentially walking around in someone else's shoes trying to fit in in a way that, isn't actually authentic to us and it doesn't actually feel good so it's like coming back to like well what is your truth and what is your vision and what is authentic and real to you and knowing who you are and allowing yourself to dissolve the stories and the patterns and the programs that we have created or taken on about who we are or who we are not so that we can be in that fullness and that honesty of that expression so oh, beautifully said. There's a lot of pressure to conform and fit in a box and basically you get to choose, right? You get create your own box. Create your own box. And so one last question. So you're a car doctor of chiropractic medicine. You um, have many other master's degrees or degrees in nutrition and um, and you're a transformational coach with a very successful coaching business um, and an entrepreneur with a whole entrepreneur side as well um, with a massive team that helps you and under you. How do you start your day? Like with all of those balls in the air, you're also a mother um, to a beautiful boy. So how do you, do you have a morning routine? You know, do you, do you have a strict morning routine how do you start the day? Do you have any secrets around that? Um, I used to have a really strict morning routine and that routine would get lived from stress and pressure because it was something that I saw that I had to do. Um, and when I, the more that I relax that and the more that I, and this is something, you know, like another layer and another edge that I'm leaning into at the moment, the more that I am choosing to, um, connect to myself in a way that feels pleasurable and connected and like self-loving and just to ask myself like what do I most need in the moment like what most lights me up and follow that and it might be one thing or it might be two things or it might be three things in a way that's aligned to my values then that's essentially the morning routine that lights me up the most and gives me the most energy and it, and it look it will look slightly different um, on on different moments or in, and on different mornings um, but yeah that's that's what I like to choose I, I will sometimes often find myself getting rigidly like attached to a morning routine having to be a certain way and then if I notice my what I will tend to notice is that I feel stressed in doing that and when I actually pull it back and and you know go into my little overwhelm or meltdown funk for a moment and then have this opportunity to reconnect and realign to, to my vision and my values and create and cultivate my morning ritual from that place, which is not consistent every day because variety and freedom are very high values for me, then that is what always feels most self-honoring. So it's a balancing act. It's continuously a, um, a, a, a rewiring and a recalibrating of what is actually truthful for me. So you basically just wake up and say, hey, body, what do I need? And go with yeah, it. Yeah, I'll just talk to my soul. I'm like, what would light me up? And the way that that started was I had a list of, of things or I have like a, a vision board where there's different things written up and I have the words that mean something to me um, around that kind of that center point. And so when I look at that, I feel those words and I feel that energy and then I can be, okay, well, what's going to allow me, what, 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 what are the things that are going to be allow me to feel this the most right now? And then from that place I do it, but it's very visual. Um, and so it's like, it steers me in the face and I can see that and I can feel that. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yes. Like this feels good. 
And it doesn't always feel good. Sometimes it feels hard to do the habit, like going to the gym this morning early before I went into practice, didn't feel comfortable. And afterwards, it felt really good. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. They were amazing secrets to living a limitless life. And I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Um, I'm sure the viewers have learned loads. And you are amazing. You're so inspiring. And thank you. You have so much knowledge. And I'm really, really grateful that you shared it with us today. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Great. Well, this is Dr. Tammy J. McKenzie. We'll put all her details below so you can follow her. Tammy writes some amazing content that's really inspiring and often really makes you think. So watch out for her. She's a bit of a bombshell, even though she's very relaxed and body aware. I love her. Thanks for being on the show. Lots of love, everyone. Um, you're with Manda J. Bieber, and this is the Success Love Speed Summit. See you soon.